you made it. I mean, think about how 2020 has been from day one, from the get-go until now. For you to be in December, for you to be at the end of the year, if you're looking for what to be grateful about life for, start there. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Good to have you. So I'll start with what this week had. Um, I just was looking back at a recap of some images um, when I followed around NCBA as they went to do part of their CSR. And I was just excited because these are the groups that I sat with at the ladies talk and they were formed as a group. And the ladies decided that each, they would actually form groups and the groups would be able to go to different places and be able to do some charity work, extend their hand and heart. So it was so good to see the ladies actually go and do something amazing, which kind of reminded me that I also had to <laughs> do my deed for the year. You know, I think this year might have hardened us in, into giving because we feel like we don't have enough. But I'm glad that um, just seeing the ladies of NCBA do their charity work reminded me to, no matter what you have, it could be giving of your time. Let's not think of giving as always money. Sometimes it's just giving your Saturday off and saying, I'll spend it with someone to do something for them. So just give something before the year wraps. This is my first visit to Remnant Generations, and I'm really very happy to be here. Um, my experience was both is both breathtaking and emotional. And I would like to thank Remnant Generation for this cause, cause I believe it comes from God. And um, as a community, we can do more. And then this week, I had to be a moderator. Isn't that our new normal? I mean, my job used to be that once I entered October, I was busy. I was in, because I'm an MC, I still am. Times will change. I'm a corporate MC, and as such, we used to have events to end the year, events for corporate companies to um, launch products and all sorts of things. Now it's changed. Companies are calling you to moderate, and so you're sitting in front of a computer. And so um, a family that's been here before, NSSF Uganda, actually had me to moderate their final webinar, which was actually on women having the last word. And they were saying that their part in society is for them to actually give financial literacy, help you understand how to make money, um, how to keep it. Um, for those who are saying that, okay, I might retire soon, how to plan for your retirement and so much more. And we had a panel of just ladies and me as their host because they said their final, final show was supposed to be about women having the last word. Because if you think about it, women are at the core of the finance of the world, of the economies. And so you, you need to have them have their say and their opinion. So it was great. Other than that, I'm, I'm just glad to wrap the week, to be honest, because what I'm looking at is a chance for me to rest. So I figured, what will I say in this vlog? I'm just going to pour it out and then say um, goodbye for now because I'd like to wrap my year a bit early. I've thought about it. I've never, actually, every single Christmas and New Year's, I've been working. Yep, every single one. And mind you, I've worked for almost close to two decades now, which is embarrassing <laughs> because what do you mean you've worked every single year, even Christmas, even when I was pregnant, I worked through Christmas, I worked through New Year and I promised myself that this will be the year that I do better. And so I decided that I'll stop work and everything on the 18th, mm -hmm, which is next Friday. And I'll, I'll just literally smell the roses, you know, um, wake up on my own and not the alarm wake me up go to bed when i want to watch tv guys it's a luxury for me to watch tv i mean it because i leave home very early and even if i woke up early i've got my son and he wants to play and you don't want to play with him going like yeah 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 while flipping channels and so i find myself being at home and saying what show is cool nowadays what series is everybody watching man that's you're so lucky you get netflix hmm. You know, so I literally want to do those small things that I haven't been able to do for almost a year and a half, to be honest. So what has 2020 been like for me? Because when I thought about it, I said, do I want to share with them 20 lessons for 2020? But I said, no, really, that's just like dictating stuff. Just speak from your heart. And so this vlog is just the year. Okay, it's just me talking to you as we end the year, because if this year has taught me anything, is that vulnerability is part of healing, okay? So at the start of this year, there was a business partnership or understanding or agreement, whatever you want to call it. 
and this person is someone that I admired. So, I mean, still think great of this person. We had to work together on their project. And I was excited. And I spoke to everybody around me, family, friends, my husband, and we were convinced it's the best thing for me to do. I had contemplated to have my role on this project become so big that I would actually leave every other thing I'm doing. Um, I'd anticipated big things in the future. By future, I mean December, you know, you get, anyway. I had seen myself making a lot of money. I had seen myself um, just making big moves business-wise. I'd seen myself just changing my life. And I could see it. You know when you talk with someone and you're both seeing the deal, as in you're, you're both seeing the thing come alive, as in we were both convinced. But what happened is that I kept quiet about things I didn't understand in the beginning. I kept quiet about certain personality traits I didn't understand in the beginning. And before I knew it, I was questioning myself, questioning the work we were doing, questioning the person I was working with, and I, I didn't have clarity. Okay, because sometimes, I don't know if, it's, if you're like me, when you, a lot is going on, you're not able to make the right decisions. And so I truly, truly, truly believe on my part, I made the wrong decision to, ev even in the first place, be mixed up with this person. Not because they are bad, but because our personalities don't gel. Uh, our work ethics and our work standards are totally different. And n no one is wrong. I'm just saying, we are opposites, literally opposites. And I'm saying we're not, no one is wrong because sometimes when people say I fell out with someone business-wise or whatever personally, you think they're enemies. I honestly believe there are people out there you're not meant to work with, there are people you're not meant to be friends with, there are people you're not meant to date, there are people you're not meant, just, it's, it exists. And I truly, truly believe that's what happened to us. Now that really threw me off. Because the minute we both realized it couldn't work, it was a case of I block you, you block me. Ah! And then I went through like a guilt phase of, oh my God, I thought I was brilliant. How could I not see that? Then that phase met me into another work relationship that also went sour, unfortunately. And I kept telling myself, what is it, Flavia? What is it about you that is fending people off? As in, it, it has to be you because you can't tell me both these people had a problem. So I had to sit down and just like have a pep talk with myself and say, okay, chick, what is it? And I told myself, you know, the truth is you're not a bad person. And also you're brilliant. Probably could have added something to these people. However, you're probably in like a place where you have not healed mentally, physically, emotionally, so many things. You haven't figured out who you are. You haven't figured out what this next phase of your life is. So maybe first chill chill business with anybody else, chill partnerships on any level, chill everything and first understand yourself. Now, I, I said that, but I didn't understand it. So, took another month, I took on more work relationships, still went sour. Let me tell you, 2020, hey, I could write a book. So, I think count a total of four or five work relationships this year that went sour for me. Sour. Either I had to end the, relation, the work relationship or they had to come and just say it's not working. Five. And then I said, okay. I sat down. I, I said my prayers. You, actually, you get to that point where you, the prayers are not working because you're praying the wrong things. The crying is not helping. The sitting alone is not helping. The consulting everybody around you is not helping. Until I said, I need help. And guess what I did? I went for counseling. All those who want to judge, first have a seat on the side. We'll come back for you. <laughs> I used to hear people say, I have a therapist. I've gone for counseling. And I'm like, but what is wrong with you? Chichi, as in, what's possibly wrong with you to a point where you have to go for counseling? Or we assume counseling is for marriage or for intimate relationships. We never assume that we need it for our individual selves. Lucky for me, I didn't have to look farther because we already had a counselor who had helped me and my husband in our marriage. So I said, do you also help individuals? Yeah, you come through. We had, I think, a two-hour session. <laughs> Imagine, have you ever gone to a doctor 
when your head hurts, you've been vomiting, your legs, you can't stand, you're dizzy, you've lost weight. You when you're just feeling like the ultimate S-I-S-H-I-T, I don't want to swear. But yeah, then you get to the doctor, the doctor says, tell me, what's the problem? You're like, oh my God, I can't stand, I can't breathe, my chest hurts. My chest. You say all these 30 symptoms, the doctor says, mm, no, 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 that's just a headache. You're like, yeah, that's one of the things. No, 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 no. It's a headache that has brought the other symptoms. And you're like, that's it? I really thought I had like, I don't know what virus because the world. So that's the same thing that happened to me. So I'm there telling the counselor, I feel like this. And then this people don't understand me. Then this one is so wrong. Then how could this one? Then me, I'm... She looks at me, she's like, you're just tired. I'm like, no, 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 Don't play those games. <laughs> I am not just tired. Things are just not working out. And she said, okay, in a week, Walk me through what you do for others on one side. Then you walk me through what you do for yourself on one side. Of course, just so you know, the list for others was so long. Mine all had one thing. And she said, that's it. Just take time for yourself. And it, it doesn't mean that when I say take time for yourself, I went to a spa. I got a massage. That's time for yourself, which is what I used to be. I used to go for a breakfast and say, oh, I, I sat down and had breakfast. But well, your mind wasn't clear. And so she told me, don't start big. Start by doing the small things. Take, if you can't take a full day off, take one hour off a day. Just for you. Don't work, don't do it. Just chill. And so eventually after the session, we agreed that I wouldn't work on weekends until the year ended. And I stuck to it. I started that, I think I met her on a Thursday. And Saturday and Sunday I didn't work. Of course I failed a bit there because halfway I was like, I'm bored. Let's work. Pull out the laptop start working and you're like there you go Flavia you are the problem <laughs> and then the next weekend I did it perfectly and then last weekend is when I mastered it Friday 4 p.m. I had logged off put the phone somewhere in a handbag don't even know where it is went down on the mat with my son and said let's crawl let's have a blast <laughs> okay and by the end of Sunday I felt like I was a new person okay because I had given myself time, time to not think, by the way, because also time to think is hectic, eh? just time to be, you know, and instead of putting on like Shark Tank where you need to think about numbers, you put on like Love and Hip Hop New York, where everybody's punching everybody and you're like, hey, but that chick's weave is not nice, you know, so your, yeah, your brain cells deplete a bit, <laughs> so that then you feel like I've real chilled, so that's me, so that helped me and then all of a sudden I could see clearly. I could see why that friendship didn't work out. I could see why this year I couldn't manage that business. I could see why I couldn't maintain that person working with me. I could see why I was arguing like this in my relationship. I could see why I couldn't bond with this. Oh my God, things just became so clear. It's almost like, you, you, okay, me, I wear glasses. So w when your glasses are a bit hazy and dirty, you can't see clearly. So imagine you get them off and you wipe them off and you put them back, the vision is clearer. That's exactly how I felt. And I can't, I can't promise you it will always be perfect for me, but I'm happy that I could even figure out that stopping and just doing nothing, being still, was the gift I could have given myself in 2020. I, like, trust me, me, I thought time for myself or self-care meant buy myself something new, spend money here, do this for somebody else. But no, turns out it's just being still and being present. That's it. As in, that's all we needed. Why didn't someone put that in a box and give it to me in Jan of 2020? I wouldn't have gone through all of these things. But as you know, it's the battle before the blessing. So you must go through some of these pain points to earn. You know, the stripes make you earn whatever you have today. So I'm ending the year happy. I'm ending the year content. More content than I've ever been, by the way. I'm ending the year fulfilled, you know that there are dreams, there are things I wanted to achieve this year and I've not. But I believe, I absolutely believe that everything I have today is what I was supposed to have today. So I'm like, okay, my dreams are there. Because they're there, I will work upon them. But for now, for now, be still and be present. So that's me, 2020. Uh, of course, the best thing that ever happened to me this year was the birth of my son, Liam Ahawe Kabura, and he is continuing to slap us when he is annoyed and uh, speak Japanese because nobody understands what he's saying, but nonetheless makes us very happy. 
I've also gotten uh, other good thing that has happened out of 2020 is that I learned how to connect with you guys. Uh, whether it's on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, wherever you follow me or here, I feel like 2020 is there where we, we connected. Don't you feel that way? I feel like I shared a lot more of myself this year and like we left a lot here. We're vulnerable. So I feel like that was another gift for 2020, the connection that we have. And hopefully as I create content for 2021, it's going to get better. It's going to get bigger and just awesome. Okay. So yeah, what do I want to leave you with? Um, happy holidays. Um, I pray that you find the clarity you need on anything. I pray that if things didn't go well for you in 2020, you don't, you're not hard on yourself. You know, you don't take it to heart and say, it's me who has failed. Um, just say this moment was challenging. This moment didn't work out. I will do better. Okay. And if things went well for you, kudos to you. And hopefully they'll become tenfold. I pray for blessings on your family, but I'm going to have to say happy holidays, Merry Christmas and happy new year. I'll see you somewhere in Jan. God willing. Bye.